Hey, I'm Mark, and this homestead here is where I'm lucky enough to call home. I live here with my partner Alice and two dogs, Gigi and Kaya. We came to Portugal in 2021 to find a homestead, pursuing a dream of ours of becoming more self-sufficient and connecting us back with nature. In February 2022, we found our perfect property in the beautiful Sao Mamad Natural Park in Alentejo. After one year on a homestead experiencing one of the hottest summers and wettest winters on record, we've learned a hell of a lot, but we're learning more every day. Follow us as we navigate life on our Quinta, doing many of these things for the very first time and acquiring a bunch of new skills along the way. and welcome to a new video. The spring is definitely here. There's so much life around at the moment, so many flowers coming through, so many insects around, the birds are chirping so much every morning. One of the swales I dug ages ago, I planted loads of mustard on to help strengthen the berm and they've just come up so, so quickly. All of these flowers here are from mustard plants. And if you watched the last video, you'll know this excavator makes an appearance in this video. So today we had a guy come in to do some excavating work for us. They were recommended by a friend and we thought we'd just give them a go. Obviously digging these things with massive JCBs is not the tidiest. So uh, I'm going to have to do a bit of uh, tidying up with the berm and everything, but um, at least the heavy work's done. So this is a two meter wide swale. So much, much bigger than our other ones. Uh, the berm's a lot bigger as well. And this area is actually flattened, which is going to be our composting area. Uh, easier access from the house so you can just come down this path here and this would act as a tractor track so you'd be able to back right up and fill up with fill up the back of compost or chuck it in a wheelbarrow this area here is actually for our shed that we bought just before it, it flooded so we were actually going to put it down there for those of you who watched the flood video you'll know that that was a, a bit of a flooding zone so we decided to put it up here uh, the good thing about this is basically we've got a tractor track going down here so we can get to the fruit trees and stuff that we plant here so we can harvest them, prune them down etc and we can use it as a track and then obviously in the wet months this would actually catch the water and stop it from flowing down the land too quickly. Uh, this is going to act as another track which would come to uh, the shed which will be here it's about 2.3 meters by 2.3 meters or something like that. So it's fairly big. So we got him to extend this swale as well. So I dug it by hand up to here. It is actually supposed to go all the way to the path, but there's still a couple of trees there, which I planted ages ago and I need to move them before he does that. So I was actually planning on moving them onto this berm, 
uh, and then that would clear some areas as well and I'll keep you updated with what he does next time but for now what I'm gonna have to do is a bit of a tight bit of a tidy up job so I'm gonna have to tidy up these these berms flatten them out a little bit um, same with these ones as well uh, and um, yeah we'll get on with those projects further down the line the composting area and where we're gonna put the shed as well Ah, one day, so I have a lot of stuff to do today. Um, not really sure where to start, to be honest with you. Um, we're getting some compost delivered to this morning. I am hoping to finish the um, the beds for the climbing pants. I'm not going to be able to get the other one done yet because there's still a pistachio tree in there that I need to move. But what I've done just a minute ago is basically marked out where I'm going to put some more holes for trees. I didn't want to um, move the trees from the other end of the slope yet until I had the holes in place, had the compost ready, and I've also got some. I've got, also got some of this. I can't remember the name. This fungi stuff that uh, Richard Perkins uses. My, I'll put I'll put what it is in the video because I'm I'm gonna butcher the name, um, and also got some bone meal. A while ago, I bought this drip pipe in. Uh, which is which was supposed to be um, for the the veg garden, but um, Vivi and me just chucked it in the truck and uh, forgot to measure the the distance between the drippers. So what I'm going to do is, although these swales are obviously going to be good for um, stopping water in the rainy season, uh, obviously storing more water underground and everything. The new trees especially are going to need to be uh, watered quite a bit. So between each dripper there is, so it's a meter. Okay, cool. So that works out well because um, basically every every two meters there's going to be a tree. Same as the other berm as well. Um, and when we did do another swale, I'm going to have the same setup. So um, there's one 
meter between each dripper. So I'm gonna have, similar to the swell I did at the top, I'm gonna have a tree, um, a one meter gap, then a small bush or shrub or something like that. So it could be rosemary, thyme, um, lavender or berry bushes. And then I'm gonna have another tree and then this would basically irrigate it throughout the drier months. Over time, you know, you're not gonna need this. Uh, but also, as you may have seen in another video, I've been trialing a little mini veg garden on the berm and it's actually doing way better than the other veg garden uh, at the moment. So I'm probably going to do this on some scale, um, maybe maybe here because it's closer to the other veg garden, but at least I've got options then. So uh, obviously I can just connect the, um, the other drip pipe into the end of this. Uh, and continue it on that way. Um, last night, me and Alice did quite a bit of uh, the paths. This veg garden, we've got the paths done here. I really prefer this wood chip, but it just takes so long for me to chip it. So sometimes you just need to weigh up the time that you're gonna do it versus the, the cost. And then we put in the uh, more paths here. Basically it does get a little bit boggy from where we only have a thin layer. So we put an extra layer there. I've prepped uh, the paths for here. Obviously when I get the compost and everything, I'm gonna mark out the beds properly and then connect all the irrigation up. Uh, so all of this is irrigated as well. Did this path as well. This bed I'm not gonna do quite yet. So I've actually got the asparagus crowns, most of them in here, um, and they're already shooting up. I've not really been watering it too much. I've been watering it probably every few days. Um, and then this is the pistachio tree I need to move. This is the female one, I think, and that's the male one. So I'm likely gonna put them quite close together. They look quite healthy, got like loads of new shoots out, which is cool. And then obviously all of this. And then the other tree I'm gonna move is this cherry tree, which is actually the first tree I planted on the land. Um, and I'm gonna move that, I think it's lemon tree as well there, cause this, this swale was actually gonna continue. Um, so I've got one, two, three, four holes to dig here. So I should be able to put the pistachio, move the pistachio trees and one of the cherry trees and maybe the, the lemon tree as well. I've also got this uh, peach tree, which is, um, which is sprouting. Uh, it looks quite healthy actually. Um, looks like it's a grafted one by the looks of things, but um, yeah, I need to plant that as well. So obviously I'm gonna have to mark out uh the trees that are going on this this well so yeah basically writ off today for a garden day been working like doing company work all week um so it's good to have a break from the laptop <laughs> That's one pistachio tree out. Got that other one out, and I just got that one out as well, actually. Okay, I decided I'm gonna leave this cherry in. It's about two meters from that hole anyway. I just had this delivered. Um, it's supposed to be two and a half um, meters cubed of compost, but it looks like more. I've got 10 bags of this Agri Mix uh, compost, which is basically horse manure. Um, I used it for the garden I built down there a while ago um, and it, um, yeah, it, was, it worked really well, so I'm going to mix this up.
Now time for the irrigation. My favourite part. Not. Just joking. I don't mind irrigation that much. It just gets a bit fiddly sometimes. Here I'm actually putting the pipe in closer together than I normally would. For a few reasons. One, because I don't want the pipe in right on the edge to keep soaking the wood. Two, I can plant stuff closer together because a lot of the plants would be climbing up the fencing. And also three, the wood chip paths would absorb the excess moisture. So here we've got some uh, bone meal and some that fungi stuff I couldn't say earlier. Mycorrhizal fungi, maybe. Um, Pulled this cherry tree out, which was the second tree I planted. And the roots were so deep, it was really tough to get out. So uh, that's good, I'm gonna plant that next to this one. So what I'm gonna do now is soak the holes, fill them with compost and the bone meal and the fungi. Put the trees in and put loads of compost around it. I'm also spreading some grass seed on the berm as well to give it some structure. Earlier on what I did was I just roughly put the compost and the wood chip down just, uh, just so I didn't kind of break through all the cardboard when I was doing the irrigation. Uh, and then um, after I did the irrigation, I just measured out. So it's basically two foot from the end and one and a half foot here. And then there's uh, three foot going across here and uh, one and a half foot here and then two foot at the end still. So there's quite a bit of planting space. So we could have climbing stuff all the way around the outsides and here. And then inside we could put like salads or some other stuff that, that goes well with uh, these climbing plants. Also yesterday, uh, the local shepherd uh, popped round and he gave us this uh, little uh, marmello tree, which I think it's uh, quince. Um, so that was sweet of him. Try the irrigation out and it's working, so all good. These beds probably need a good soak. Yeah, happy with how it's uh, turning out. <laughs> uh, just on these paths as well, need to um, extend them out and stuff. Need to tidy this area up as well, but yeah, it's coming along. It's coming along nicely. My friend just rang us and said they're going for lunch, so I think we're gonna go and go for lunch. So gonna give this a rest. I've done quite a bit. I was gonna write the whole day off, but I can always do a little bit when I get back later. But I've done sort of most of what I wanted to. The next job was to create a trellis for tomatoes. Apparently tomatoes go really well with asparagus and it means I can leave the asparagus on its own in the beds during the uh, winter and stuff and then in the summer I can put in tomatoes. I wanted to build a trellis for beans 
so they could uh, sit in with the root vegetables and then just climb up this fence. Okay, so I didn't get around to telling you what I did to finish the arch in the last video. So basically the fencing I have isn't too strong and when I started putting the arch together it was kind of sinking. So I probably should have used some cattle fence instead. However, I did have these old metal poles that were from the broken greenhouse we had. So what I did is I used them to create a bit more structure and I think it's gonna work okay. I guess only time will tell. But here, what I'm also doing is adding more wire so that the stuff that's growing in the middle can carry on growing further up the fence. Initially this bed was going to have a path in the front, however because it's the very front of the garden what I decided is to put a wood chip path in front of the bed rather than in it, which gives us more growing space. So in here at the moment is parsnips and carrots, so I'm just going to sow some more parsnips, carrots and then also sow some beans in directly which would eventually climb up the fence. We got time on our side. I've got some stuff from uh, the polytunnel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant the uh, cucumbers, uh, well, maybe all of them. Um, and then I'm going to interplant with uh, some beans. Apparently they work really well together. Um, and then I'll probably seed some other stuff in front of it. But for now, I'll just put these up to get them going because they're struggling a bit in the trays now. And the truth And I'm going to put squashes down this side and pumpkins. And I'm going to finish this video off with planting some beans, some rocket, some parsnip, some radish and some carrots as well. So thanks so much for watching, really appreciate it. I've still got to do some things with the veggie garden, believe it or not, but I'll update you more in the future videos.
include that bit in if I make a new video out of this. Anyway. <clears throat>